the craziest one to me was the getting the guns in America and transporting them to Mexico. Mm -hmm. That that is going on, and that it's going on with cops. It is. Uh, it is for me. It's always been. I think the first story I did on guns in America was about twelve, fifteen years ago, where I was able to buy an AK forty-seven out of a, a Taco Bell parking lot <laughs> in Arizona. Where else? And, <laughs> where else than in Arizona? <laughs> and then the funny I thing meant that where happened. Where else but a, a Taco Bell parking lot? Oh yeah, lot. of course. <laughs> Both those things. Of course. <laughs> And then we went to a bar to sort of celebrate the fact that we just filmed this crazy thing that had just happened because we, we knew it was possible that people were doing this, but we wanted to show it with our camera. So we had sort of secret cameras filming, and then I went out, and I bought it, and we went out to a bar after, uh, and I ordered a beer, and I, I forgot my driver's license, so <laughs> didn't give me a beer. That's hilarious. Isn't that funny? So no beer, but you, I could go out with a naked 47. And a few days later, we bought a 50 cal out of a guy's garage that we went out into the desert and filmed women like shot. it when they get carded of course we do yeah <laughs> it's not unfortunately I don't get carded as often nowadays well, it's just ridiculous you know <laughs> come on i guess they have to i mean but whatever I mean, oh it's, come on. it's crazy i know 21 come know. on Let's i know look at me but this was 12 years ago so it's possible possible <laughs> yeah um how hard is it to buy an ak-47 like, it was so it, easy we went online at the time i can't remember what the name of the website backpage at the time there was a website, website called backpage where you could essentially buy anything i don't think that website exists anymore but it's not even on the black market regular online uh, website and we went there and within I, I think we spoke to the guy 20 minutes before he said meet us here we went there it was him and his girlfriend were there he was high on drugs oh and boy. he had two and he had an AR-15 with him as well that he was also wanting to sell we ended up buying the AK um, but yeah so I've been fascinated with sort of um, how easy it is. How do you know he was high on drugs? Because you could tell I've, I've reported enough on drugs and meth you think? <laughs> At the time, probably. He was very jittery. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely an upper of sorts. Jesus. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, so then we decided to do this for the first season, actually, of Traffic, to story on guns and how American guns are winding up in the hands of the cartel in Mexico and how it's responsible for so much of the violence that's happening there. And sort of this cycle, which I don't think most people think about, how then the violence leads people to immigrate to America, and then they come here, and, you know, so it's like a cycle of, of violence and immigration, it's all, and guns, and it's all sort of connected. But whenever we do a story on guns, and we just, one, another one that I did on ghost guns was released last week on National Geographic, and uh, it is the most sort of controversial issue, the hot topic that we can always, so I immediately start getting messages of people saying that I should go back to my country and uh, what am I doing and I'm trying to take away people's rights to want a gun which is absolutely not the case and it's uh, yeah it's the idea think, that people wouldn't want to know that police officers are confiscating guns and then selling those guns to the Mexican cartel that you as a legal law-abiding gun owner mm -hmm. in America wouldn't want that exposed yeah absolutely it's, and and that the guns that people are buying, and particularly with this last episode on ghost guns, which is the fact that the guns are, that are now these untraceable and licensed guns are so easy to make, and they're, so many of them are ending up in crime scenes across America and on the hands of gang members and, you know, militant groups and anti-government groups, and it's, it's scary. And that's all we're, what we're trying to do as a journalist myself when we decided to do this story is because I started hearing from people talking about how these guns are ending up in the wrong place. And How do they make a ghost gun? It is, I'm happy you're asking that because I think it's the biggest, uh, f people don't understand out there. They think that when you talk about ghost guns that it has to be 3D printed. It's not, a ghost gun is an untraceable gun. Doesn't mean that it has to be 3D printed. Um, however, nowadays, it's basically, a, uh, so it's a gun that doesn't have a serial number. And it could have had a serial number and the serial number was scrubbed and maybe they put a new fake serial number in there. Um, and, but what happens is because of the 3D printers, um, it's now super easy to just print a gun or gun parts at home. So there are all these companies out there who sell 80% kits that have everything to build a gun except for the receiver. But there's a company, for example, called Defense Distributed, ran by Cody Wilson, who was the first one to use a ghost gun uh, or a gun, a 3D printed gun. Actually, it was called the Liberator. And uh, he got in all sorts of trouble. The with, Liberator. Yeah. And he's a strong believer in, um, 
he said he wanted this to his his company to be sort of the WikiLeaks for guns so that everybody could have access to guns. So he sells these kits that are 80% kits and it's all everything you need to buy again except for the lower receiver, which is what the ATF and the government actually considers to be the gun. What part is the lower receiver? It depends on which weapon I believe, but it's the bottom on the guns that he's selling, it's sort of the bottom piece. Oh, okay. Um there's the liberator. Yeah, that is a liberator. Yeah, so this is all 3D printed, and he had he showed so that's me that's an actual gun, that plastic that thing. That is, and you know, somebody it, pulled that on me, I'd be skeptical. And this was like, several hey. years ago. It's evolved <laughs> a lot. It's evolved a lot since then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ghost Here's gun. Ghost wow. Yeah. So that's a real gun, that These plastic thing. Ghost guns too. Yeah. And so, but what, now, oh, but yeah, but if you want to yeah. see some of the new ones and what they're guns. making, yeah, and now, they, these are also ghost guns. And some of that is metal. So what? Are the, where some do they of get it is metal. metal parts? It can be all 3D printed. Some of it is metal. So you can buy it from companies like Cody Wilson's. And then These he, 3D print metal? Oh, nowadays, yes. You can, really? you can have a, it's like a polyamor, uh, what's the, I can't remember. Polymer? What it's, polymer, sorry. Polymer uh, material that is, yeah, that, that, that's what a lot of the guns are actually like made Like a carbon of. fiber yeah. or something? Because mm -hmm. I've seen carbon mm -hmm. fiber barrels for hunting rifles. They make them very light so that people can take them mm -hmm. into the back country when they go deep yeah. into the woods. There's all the kind of parts you can make with wow. 3D printing metal stuff. Oh, one of the craziest things we filmed for this Ghost Gun episode was actually this: these teenagers that were also making uh, 3D and ghost guns. And they came to the desert with us and we spent a whole day with them shooting guns and showing us what they build. And they were also... Uh, making drop-in sears, which are little pieces to that transform a gun from semi-automatic to fully automatic. Mm. And they're illegal, actually, in America. You can't buy that at a gun store, but they're making them for 50 cents. Yeah, it's, wow. it's a crazy, it's a crazy world.